folks, Jeff here. Welcome back to part two of our three-part series on how to get started doing amateur astronomy. I'm really excited about this part because I'm actually going to be making a telescope recommendation. All right, let's get to it. Now, before we get into it, I would like to recommend that you go back and watch the first video if you haven't in this series. Uh, it's got a lot of great tips and recommendations for just getting started, and uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. Now, even if you're starting with a $250 budget, I think it's a great idea and absolutely critical to uh, follow some of the advice in the first video and pick up some magazines uh, and books and start to learn your way around the night sky. It may even be more important uh, for this video because you're actually going to be using a telescope rather than simply going outside and looking at the sky with the naked eye or using a pair of binoculars to surf your way around up there. The most important thing when it comes to amateur astronomy is understanding what you're looking at and being able to find it in the night sky. So I think it's uh, absolutely critical to uh, check out some books and magazines on amateur astronomy. Here I've got my very first uh, book on amateur astronomy. This is Night Watch by Terence Dickinson. You can see it's the uh, updated t through 2010 version. So you want to get a, uh, a version that is uh, updated for... 2019. And uh, I also recommend, and should have recommended in the last video, but I'll go ahead and put it in now, getting yourself a journal to keep track of your observations. Here you can see this is my sky gazing journal. And you can see I've got all kinds of information in it, uh, occasional sketches and stuff. And this is just a great way to keep track of objects that you've observed, what they looked like through various instruments. And it's a great way to keep track of, uh, you know, your memories while you're while you're doing this. I love going through my old uh, journals and notebooks and looking up, you know, remembering when and where I was when I saw certain objects and who I was with and stuff like that. So uh, I strongly recommend starting an astronomy journal. It doesn't have to be anything complicated. A lot of my entries are, you know, maybe a couple of sentences, a quick sketch of one of the planets or the moon that I'm looking at. Uh, but just even that it, it makes a big difference and is a great thing to do with when you're just starting out doing amateur astronomy. Now, the $100 to $250 price range is a great uh, price range to get started at because you can actually get your hands on a fantastic beginner telescope uh, at that price range. And this uh, telescope that I'm going to talk to you about in just a minute is a fantastic beginning telescope. It's going to be great for people who are just getting started, who don't really, haven't learned their way around the night sky yet. And it's also uh, big enough and robust enough to grow with you through your astronomy journey. So I've been looking at the sky uh, for 15 years now, and I still uh, you know, find plenty of times to pull this telescope out and use this. This is a fantastic telescope. So. This bad boy here is the uh, AWB, which stands for Astronomers Without Borders, uh, five inch tabletop Dobsonian telescope. Uh, it's tabletop, you can see, it's sitting on a table, uh, which means as it's small, it doesn't have a tripod like a lot of other larger telescopes do. Um, the five inches refers to the size of the objective mirror, which I'm going to show you now. Let me take off the uh, dust cover here, spin this around. And you can see we've got a five inch primary mirror here, which is almost absurdly huge for a small beginner telescope in this price range, which is great. You want to have the largest uh, mirror or lens that you can basically get your hands on. Um, this te telescope is also collapsible. Here, we'll just undo the screws there. Pull this out, screw this back in to hold it. And so you can see that this telescope is uh, is wonderful to have on hand, uh, you know, throw it in your closet, drag it out when you uh, want to go look at something. It's great for traveling with. I do a lot of traveling for my job, so uh, this is a fantastic telescope for me because I can collapse it down real small, toss it in the back of the car, and uh, take it where it's going without worrying about it getting too beat up, knocked out of alignment. It's a very robust telescope uh, in this uh, size and price range. It comes with high quality optics and a lot of uh, quality um, accessories, which is something that a lot of telescopes in this price range kind of skimp on. So normally, uh, if you were spending, you know, between $100 and $250 on a small telescope, you'd be getting something, there's a, there's a sacrifice being made there. Either the mount is cheap and shaky, which is terrible, um, because, you know, if you're trying to look through your telescope and everything's bouncing around, you're not going to have a great time. 
um, the optics are subpar or the accessories and eyepieces are subpar. And the AWB One Sky uh, 5 inch Dob comes with uh, robust optics, great accessories. The base, this is a Dobsonian style mount, which means it sits flat on the ground and simply rotates like this and tips up and down like this. It's called an alt azimuth uh, style mount, though there are other um, alt azimuth style mounts. Um, and the accessories that it comes with is really great too. So it has a um, red dot finder scope here on the side. So you turn this on, little red dot appears there. You look through it, you put the red dot on the object that you want to see, and your telescope is going to be focused on it. Um, go ahead and extend it here. You can see that it comes with the focuser. The focuser is actually ingenious for this because instead of having the uh, rolling focuser with the focuser knobs like you see on a lot of telescopes, this one simply screws in or out. Now, um, that's probably the low point of the telescope, I would say, is that it's hard to get an exact focus uh, with the kind of screw-in out uh, focuser like that, and it's hard to do fine focusing adjustments, but for what you're doing with this telescope, it's fine. You're in great shape. And it comes with some very good eyepieces, too. Uh, so here I've got one in there now that you can see. Um, of course, it comes with a dust cover as well, and it comes with a collimation cap, which is a type of eyepiece that you can use to align the optics in the telescope. So a Newtonian telescope or a reflector telescope like this, of course, uses a curved mirror to reflect the light back onto the secondary mirror, which you see here, which then bounces it out through the eyepiece, which focuses it. Uh, and occasionally, if your telescope gets bumped or just over time, the mirror can sort of get out of alignment. And now, realigning the mirror is actually very simple. On the back of this telescope, you can see you've got a few finger screws here. And when you screw or unscrew those, they can adjust and bend the mirror just slightly uh, to get it into focus. Now, in order to get it into focus, you need a collimation cap, which is a special kind of lens that lets you align that, ma that main mirror with your secondary mirror here. And I'll do a video on how to collimate a Dobsonian telescope. It can seem a little intimidating at first, but once you do it a couple of times, it's actually pretty quick and easy. So what telescope should I buy is a pretty common question that uh, I get asked. And it used to be much harder for me to answer because it depended on a lot of things. What are your price range? What are you trying to see? Uh, what are you used to using? That sort of stuff. Um, and, but when the, uh, when the One Sky Telescope came along, um, I think that this telescope really combines the best of all worlds for a beginner telescope. It's got a 5-inch mirror, which is a, uh, a very large-sized mirror for a beginner telescope. Um, a lot of f first telescopes that people get are 60-millimeter refractors or maybe, you know, a 4-inch uh, uh, Newtonian reflector like this. Uh, but with five inches of aperture, you're going to really be able to capture almost all the objects that you might want to see out in space. So deep sky objects like nebulae and galaxies, great views of the planets and the moon, um, you know, anything you want to see as far as cometary nuclei, uh, looking for asteroids, hunting faint planets like Uranus or Neptune. All that stuff is starting to get within your reach with a 5-inch telescope like this. Now, I think that this telescope particularly shines for beginners because um, a lot of the things that people want to see when they're first getting starting, started, like the moon and the planets, um, you're going to get a decent view with a small telescope like a 60-millimeter refractor like most people start with, you know, your sort of traditional telescope that you might see in a department store or something like that. Uh, but with this 5-inch reflector, you're going to be able to see those things, but really get to see some beautiful detail on them. So the moon is going to look amazing through this telescope. Um, planets are really, you're, you're actually going to be able to use higher magnifications with a scope like this and still be able to get a good view. So you're going to be able to make out surface details on planets like Mars, see the bands of Jupiter, see the rings of Saturn really beautifully. Uh, so this is a fantastic uh, scope to start out with. But it also lets you grow into hunting things like deep sky objects. So um, open clusters, globular clusters, nebulae, even distant galaxies, stuff like that. 
uh, you'll be able to start picking up those kinds of objects with this scope and actually getting a good view of them, which is much harder to do with a smaller scope, like, like I said, like a 60 millimeter refra refractor. And the scope is only $200, which is a fantastic price point for a telescope as good as this one. And it's from uh, Astronomers Without Borders, which is an organization exactly like it sounds like. It's sort of like Doctors Without Borders. They uh, bring telescopes to parts of the world where it's hard to get a telescope and uh, share the wonders of the universe with people all over the planet, which obviously near and dear to my heart. And if you go and purchase this telescope on the uh, Astronomers Without Borders website, they have a shop there. Check it out. Just Google Astronomers Without Borders. I'll post a link in the uh, description as well. Uh, if you purchase this through there, then the profits go towards their mission of sharing telescopes around the world, which, uh, you know, is, like I said, near and dear to my heart. So fantastic cause, uh, great price for a fantastic telescope. It's really, really hard to beat this scope at that price range. So nowadays, when people ask me, you know, what should, scope should I get started with, it's a lot easier for me because I don't have to quiz them or try and guess what they're going to be uh, enjoying the most. And I can simply say, hey, look, here's a great telescope to uh, start with. So that's what I'm recommending for this price range is the Astronomers Without Borders uh, One Sky 5-inch Tabletop Dobsonian Telescope. Uh, and if you move up from a Dobsonian mount or you end up getting a really good equatorial mount or something like that, you can actually dismount the telescope from the Dobsonian mount as easily as that and it's got a uh, dovetail on the side and you can mount this tube on any kind of equatorial mount or anything like that uh, and it'll work perfectly so if you get a good go-to mount or a computerized mount you can throw this five inch bad boy on there and be surfing the sky with that and since the scope is only two hundred dollars that leaves you some money in your budget uh, that you can pick up some good accessories with obviously like i said uh, i suggested you know some books some magazines, pick up a journal, uh, maybe even that, uh, you know, a good cheap pair of binoculars, like maybe some Celestron Cometron binoculars, those are like $35 or so. But if you've got the money left over, the $50 or whatever, you can actually start buying some cool accessories for the telescope. So you can buy a nice new eyepiece, which eyepieces are critical uh, to telescopes. They're probably the second most important thing after the actual uh, mirror itself or lens. Um, uh, or you can buy a mount to mount your cell phone to the uh, telescope if you want to start doing some uh, amateur astrophotography with your cell phone. Uh, those mounts can run anywhere from, you know, 15 to $50. Now, as far as uh, books and star charts to get you started with your uh, new telescope, because like I said, you want to be able to find what you're looking for and know what's out there. Um, a really handy one that I've got is uh, Sky and Telescope published the Pocket Sky Atlas, and this is fantastic because it is just straight up charts, star charts, shows you where everything is. This blue is the Milky Way. Um, the brightness of stars, uh, it gives you exact coordinates for stuff. It has all the Messier objects labeled, which I'll cover what those are later. Um, but this is a really fantastic uh, sky chart to have with you while you're, you know, out observing uh, because it's, you know, pretty tough fairly cheap so you don't have to worry about if it gets uh, wet or torn up or anything like that fairly easy to uh, replace now if you want the best of the best of uh, star charts uh, then you need to get yourself a hold of Norton's Star Atlas Norton's Star Atlas is the gold standard for astronomical charts, and it's also a great book for people who are getting started with uh, astronomy because it has a lot of information about astronomical objects. So here's a chapter on galaxies, how galaxies evolve, stuff like that. So if you want to actually know something about the objects that you're observing, it's a great book to have. And it has got the, uh, the best star charts in the business. You can see some of these here. Um, and these go down to some very, very dim stars. So you can find your way around the sky at all times. Um, and either one of those books is going to be an excellent uh, pairing with this telescope. Though, if you're just starting out, I would definitely recommend the uh, Sky and Telescope Pocket Sky Atlas. Now again, uh, I highly recommend, even if you're starting in the $100 to $250 price range, to go check out the previous video and take those lessons to heart. Because combining um, the books and magazines that I've spoken about, a cheap pair of binoculars with a scope like this is really going to multiply what you're going to be able to get out of all of it. So, uh, I mean, a pair of binoculars is going to be great because you can just lay back or, or stand up or whatever and surf around the sky. 
find a cool looking object, uh, you know, zap your telescope to it, start really checking it out. Whoa, this is cool. What am I looking at? Grab your pocket sky atlas, flip through that, find the object, figure out, oh, you know, I'm looking at uh, M91 here. Wow, that's a galaxy that's 75 million light years away. I can't believe it. Uh, so combining this telescope that I'm recommending in this price range with the things that I've already recommended for the other price range is going to give you the most bang for your buck here. All right, folks. Well, I hope that you found this video useful. If you have, please uh, like and subscribe. Hit the bell for uh, notifications for all of our new videos. And uh, please tell anybody that you know who might be interested in this kind of uh, stuff that uh, our channel is here. Uh, keep tuned for our next video, the third video and final one in this series, where I'm going to be going through the $250 to $450 price range. That was really exciting because I'm going to have two telescope recommendations and just sort of some general ideas about what to start looking for in a telescope in that kind of price range. All right, everybody, thank you again so much for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye.